Hi everyone, this is Charles Mass and uh, is two minutes with Charles Motivation. I'm very glad to uh, to share with you this two minutes motivation. And uh, I want you to sit down and relax as you watch this motivation. This is something that we'll be doing from time to time, two minutes of motivation with Charles. And I'm glad to share this with you. Today we are talking of something very specific and a very short of entitled redefining ourselves. I, I want to speak of something about redefining ourselves according to God's purpose. You know, when God created us as human beings, He had a very clear purpose of why He created us. And He knew who we are and He made us in His form, having put us like Him and He had given us everything that we needed to be who we are. And today, some of us, we are not what we are. God created us to be. We have shifted from the purpose of God and gone into another direction that was not God's intention. How can we change that before it's too late? This we can change it from looking at some factor that I would like us to look very shortly on uh, what corrupts our identity as people, as God's creation, what corrupts our identity. And one of the things that corrupts our identity is conformation to standards of this world. This one, conformation to standards of this world is Forgetting the God's purpose, why He created you, and shifting to how people have defined you, how circumstances have defined you, and how environment have defined you. These are factors that once we were born, we have come into contact with them, and they have somehow corrupted our identity. How do we change this? In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible declared that we should not be conformed to the standards of this world. And why did Paul say this in this letter? He was telling believers that they should not be conformed to the standards of this world because the standards of this world will change their way of thinking. They will not think according to the God's purpose and the plan. How he thought when he was creating us as human beings. It's like a way you can say you are making, you, you are, like a way you can manufacture a vehicle. Like let's say the end font. Any font we know is the man who meant uh, the, the font cars and who made, uh, in, uh, invented the font cars. When he was making the font cars, he had the specifics of how he intended the font car to be. Then, what if someone comes and says, we are not going to use this kind of automotive for this purpose, that any font intended the functionality of that automotive will be corrupted and it will not work as the, the, the manufacturer intended what do i mean as human beings we have to work in, in alignment with the purpose of god who created us and to do this we should never conform to the standards of this world. Some of the things, other things that uh, in, uh, corrupt our identity are is self-imposed limits. That is number two, something I've called self-imposed limits. 
Self-imposed limit is whereby you decide to settle for less in life. You don't go for what God has created you to do. You look at your circumstances, your background where you are born, and you say, with this background, I can't go far. You look at your level of education and you say, with this level of education, I can't go far. Those are circumstances you can change. Maybe you look at you're looking at your tribe and you say, our tribe is not entitled to do this and that. Or you are looking at uh, some family lineage. Maybe the, the, the name of your family is not known. Or you think that you, the family, the name of my family is not known, I can't go far. These are self-imposed limits. It's not limit that God has set for you. You have created the limits in your mind and then they have come an obstacle to you. And these are things you can get rid of your life. This is by, I'm going to tell you how you can get rid of them. And the last one, I've called it letting people define you. That is the last point. When we let people define who we are, we will never get the right answer. So don't let anyone define who you are. People will tell you you are useless. People will tell you you are good for nothing. You can't do anything perfectly. And of course, there is no one who is perfect except God. People will tell you how, will show you your weaknesses most of the time. And when you wait for people to define who you are, to tell you you are, you'll never get it right. How can we define ourselves? We can only get the answers of who we are if we look at the word of God. The word of God is what defines us and gives us the correct answer of who we are. We cannot be defined by anything else except by the word of God because God is our manufacturer and is the one who has our manual of operation. So what we should do is read the word of God. If not every day, regularly. For me, I interact the word of God every day. But it not be the case with every one of us. But if you understand the word of God and you try to read it as much as possible, you'll get to know you are clear indebted of who you are. And as I told you, one of the times these characters and it defined my life, I thought my background was my hindrance. I thought that my maybe uh, maybe tribe was my hindrance or my family lineage was my hindrance. But when I read the word of God, I got to understand the clear definition of who I am. I've created in the image of God. And what God has said in Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 11, that uh, he knows the plan he has for us. The plan to prosper us. He knows the plan. When you read the Bible, you get the plan of God for our lives and the definition of our lives. It is only in this that we can know truly that no man is created to fail. No man is created to remain poor. No man is created to remain in struggles. But in God's favors is for us human beings to have dominion. If you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Bible clear says when God created man, he gave them authority of dominion of all things, over everything. All things, the Bible says very clearly all things, not some things. 
and as human beings we are given dominion over all things and everything in this world. So it is you to redefine yourself and take chance as God has mandated us. Thank you and God bless you.